I don't tend to subtitle my reviews, but with this one I'm coming at it from quite a firm angle, at least in my mind, and there are so many potential positions I could tackle this from, that I probably had more fun whipping up a thumbnail than I did making the video. A because I always loved doing that part, and B I was just making jokes. But anyways I digress, in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Before we get too deep into talking about anything, I think it's worth putting a disclaimer here that though I did pre-order the game, Ubisoft did actually send me review copies, and like an idiot, I didn't refund the game on PC or PS4 before starting to play the game. So I bought the game twice and got review copies to render each investment totally pointless. Fuck my life. But that doesn't take away from the fact that I got review copies for both platforms, so mad props to Ubisoft for that one. However, reviews aren't for companies or devs or whatever, they are for the consumer, which is you guys, hopefully. And so I'll try not to let the review copies get in the way of me judging the game fairly. The next disclaimer I'm going to have to lay down a little harder. This is my opinion. I have a lot to say about this game, and it certainly won't all be mindless praise, so if you don't enjoy critiques, then please don't watch. If you choose to do so, I ask that you be respectful in the comments, as I'll respect all your opinions, so let's just meet halfway. Alright, are we good? Right, let's get cooking. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a game of peaks and troughs. Some things are executed adequately, other things are executed really well, and other parts aren't so well done. Story of most games, to be fair. What I'm trying to say here is the game has upheavals and setbacks, and frankly isn't anything particularly amazing. But at the same time, it's by no means a bad game. It's very dependent on what you're after from the experience. Like, I have no idea what kind of rock you've been hiding under for the past five or however many months it's been, but if you're expecting this to be an amazing Assassin's Creed game, than wounded, because it's far from it. Of course I'll have to acknowledge what's going on with Assassin's Creed, because this is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, not just Odyssey, because that's what the game is trying to sell as. And the game is sorely out of touch with its own franchise, to the point where the title of Assassin's Creed actually holds the game back from achieving superior quality. If you aren't quite sure what I mean, keep watching and hopefully I'll be able to elaborate. Assassin's Creed used to be such a pioneering franchise within the industry, innovating groundbreaking mechanics such as Eagle Vision for example, which every game seems to have a version of now. With Origins, Ubisoft decided to tackle a new structure for the franchise, which is agreeable, though questionable regarding its functionality as an innovative experience, and it wasn't as bad come the end of the day. And I really love Origins, it's a brilliant game, well worth your time. Origins was a mild RPG, it got away with as much as Assassin's Creed's core structural fundamentals would allow it. Odyssey, however, hit the fuck it bucket and just went full RPG. There are also points in the game where it hit fuck it on taking itself seriously. Hello. Miss Dios, you're back! And not a moment too soon. Can I have a threesome with two for. coffin dodges? Who is this of Xesia? This is the Mystios who's going to reignite our spark, my love. Oh no, we've been through this. I can't satisfy you anymore. You're going to kill me with your lust. <laughs> Nonsense. I'm oh, going the to voice make you an elixir so that will give you the vigor helps. of a man a fraction of your age. God save me. I cannot do this anymore. <laughs> your husband is tired. Allow me to satisfy your Oh no. I've never been with a mercenary before. Oh, Very no. well. Let's see what oh, you're no. made of. Oh no. Gives us a hug. Oh no, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Surely he can swim. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it actually happened. Odyssey has completely disregarded Assassin's Creed's core fundamentals and twisted the game into something that I wouldn't be able to recognise as the same franchise if it weren't for the title. That's not to say that the game lacks traces of Assassin's Creed, because from a lore perspective, there's a fair bit of Isu shit, some classic Assassin's Creed mindfucking as well, which I respect the game for, but from how the game plays and a lot of other elements and what's going on in the game, it doesn't feel like Assassin's Creed at all. Which is quite rich when the game bears the title of a decade old franchise. Fuck, there aren't even any Assassins or Templars in the historical part of this game, which encourages you to beg the question, does it need the Assassin's Creed title? With a complete new focus and direction, other problems have also arisen. For example, the marketing is focused entirely on making your own decisions and the impact of those decisions, what with the concept of it being your odyssey. However, with so many games doing this already, it's hardly a viable selling point within the industry anymore. Even still, 
Games like that have been out for years, such as The Witcher 3 and the original Mass Effect trilogy, still run loops around this gaming quality. In fact, most of the time the decision system's effect is more of an illusion than an impactful thing, barring crucial moments here and there in the story, but even then the effect is minimal. So don't feel bad for being a dick to people in the game, they won't do anything. The only major impact I've really noticed as a result of a poor decision was when you attack a chicken, it fights back. Don't fuck with the chickens. You could literally kill Pegasus and massacre Kefalonia and nobody will give a fuck. Ultimately, the overall point here is that despite the game's new direction, it already feels outdated because it's not trying to innovate within the RPG genre, and so the game essentially plays like something from before The Witcher 3 came out. It's not a complete disaster however, as side quests are significantly better than previous titles, including Origins, and usually wind up with you shagging an undesirable, but at least they are semi-decent cutscenes. Not immaculate, but not bad. Some quests are more interesting than others, sure, but that's just how it goes in all RPGs. So the RPG approach hasn't been a total loss. The game's world, as always with this franchise, is a thing of graphical beauty, besides Unity. Overpowering lighting does not hide that atrocious draw distance. This game is actually somehow more aesthetically photogenic in general than Origins was. What I mean by that is in Origins you had jaw-dropping landmarks, which were beautiful, but a lot of other locations wouldn't be very good photo mode material. However, in Odyssey, it feels as if I can open the photo mode no matter where I am and come out with a good shot. Okay, maybe not that one. Fucking hell, I don't even remember taking half of these. Okay, so maybe it takes a little bit of fine tuning to get a nice shot, but I get one all the same. Beyond this, the open world has plenty of locations for us to explore, but they're all marked with a question mark to let us know that they're there, which really discourages exploration because if you can't see a question mark, you know there's nothing there and so you don't really bother with that area. Let us explore this beautiful world you've crafted without the side guidance. Guidance in main quests is needed to get from A to B, otherwise you're sure to get lost. But while exploring, that's the entire point. And that's kind of impossible in a map filled with question marks telling you where all the cool shit is. I don't feel like I've had a stroke of luck whenever I find something in this game because I'm told where to go. So there's plenty of room for improvement with the open world. Gameplay is essentially the exact same as Origins because reusing an engine to cut corners is Ubisoft's forte. And to be fair, I don't blame them. It's a good engine with fun, engaging combat and fluid motion you'd think. Everything's fluid enough, no worries. But there's one problem with the combat. Every fucking enemy is a damage sponge. If you don't know what a damage sponge is, a damage sponge is a kind of enemy that soaks up a lot of damage before you can actually defeat or kill them. In Odyssey's case, this is to the point where the fight is actually boring, and as you can imagine, that can be very frustrating when this game has a knack for just piling enemies onto you. I get it, it's there to add some challenge, fair enough, but it adds challenge in a way that actually wastes your time and doesn't engage you. Which is probably one of the reasons why the game is so long, you spend a lot of it in combat. It only gets worse when they throw the bounty hunters in, fucking hell. Then there's the annoying mission structure gimmick in which you get several quests at once and it'll tell you multiple quests added, you'll go into your journal and you'll see a load of quests, all with one objective to complete, and they're all very repetitive. And to be fair, a lot of the game you're only doing because the game's telling you to. There's no real compulsion there. There's no real narrative reasoning. And when I say no real, I mean there's no real reason as far as justification is concerned or relations to the player. Then there's the whole cult system, which you need to do to get one of the three endings that comprise the ending of the game. And that requires you kill a lot of cultists, which takes far too much time and basically makes the end game there not even worth it. At the same rate as an improvement over Origins, even though some gameplay elements do get repetitive, it's nowhere near as repetitive as the quest system in Origins, which consisted of talk to somebody, go to rescue somebody, pick them up, carry them out of a restricted area, then walk off and say thanks, end of quest. It goes without saying that I'm delighted that there are barely any quests like that in Odyssey. And like I said, side quests are drastically improved. The bounty system functions similarly to previous notoriety systems. If you commit notorious acts, you become wanted by bounty hunters and they will hunt you. You can pay off your bounty for stupid money or you can scrap bounty hunters over and over again as they come after you and find you when you least need them to. Frankly, it's a good system, but it's very harshly done and can get in the way of a great many things, including main quest objectives and other things, but encourages that you don't commit stupid acts. Didn't stop me from massacring Kefalonia. I just murdered your assistant. Do you not give a shit? Okay, cool. I guess I'll murder other people as well. All the other kids with the pumped up kicks, you better run, better run. Outrun my bow. Conquest battles outstayed their welcome too, frustrating me because there's so much going on that the lock-on will just spaz out and switch between people with the slightest shift of the camera, and ultimately, though they didn't get too much in the way, 
They feel sometimes like they're there just to show off how many NPCs Ubisoft can cram into one shot. Though what I like about them is that you don't have to do them all, you only have to do a couple here and there throughout the main stories, and ultimately that's fine by me, you know what, they're okay to have here and there. And you know what, sometimes they can be fun, provided that it doesn't glitch out on you. So far you can probably tell what point I'm trying to get at here, it's not a complete downer, the base premise of the game is fun and I have enjoyed my time playing it, but in my mind I see a game that isn't reaching its full potential, presenting challenge in all the wrong ways and sorely lacking with regards to a fantastic experience, which is a shame because the game could have been so much more. I will give credit where it's due however, that the gameplay is by no means bad as it is basically the same as Origins. Moving on to the naval features of the game, the open world naval is alright, naval combat however is a nightmare and I frankly can't stand it, but using the ship is kinda essential in a setting like Greece with so many islands and everything, and the Adrestia makes getting from A to B relatively convenient. Naval is nowhere near as engaging or as fun as Black Flag however, and honestly feels like a step back in a franchise that once had the best naval combat system I've ever played. This feels like a step down from that, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, but it's just a little bit more tedious and annoying than Black Flag, which, though despite it was a great system, could get tedious and annoying within itself. The levelling curve system in this game is pretty harsh, more so early on than later, due to every enemy being a fucking damage sponge and auto levelling you can't disable, meaning that the game is very challenging, mentally more than physically, because if you know what you're doing in the game, it isn't particularly hard, it's just tedious. There's a difference between a fun challenge that engages the player and a challenge that enrages the player because it's just long and painful. This game prefers the latter, barring the Medusa boss fight which for the most part was more or less both. Mate, that took me like half an hour. That snakehead Bellin just wouldn't fucking die. It was fun for the first 90 seconds though. Honestly, the game is probably lengthened by this damage sponge issue alone, and so it tells you how little of the 50 hours it took me to get to the end of all three stories, just how much of it is actual worthy content. I'm not saying it was necessarily bad content, I'm just saying that was it really worth 50 hours of my time? And I can't say for the most part that it was. When it comes to the gear system, the game follows quite a standard direction, however, this direction is actually kind of an issue with me. Like, this is an issue even The Witcher 3 has. The gear that looks good isn't always the best, and the best gear looks like shit, unless you upgrade it which isn't really worth the copious amounts of resources it takes to do. Really? 1,000 iron to upgrade a sword along with 600 wooden 900 leather? Are you crazy? That's like the fattest sword ever! Ultimately, my point here is, stats shouldn't be applied necessarily to gear itself, so we can forge how we look. It should be applied, however, through upgrades and levelling naturally. It will make the experience a little bit more aesthetic. The only thing the gear system has on Unity is the fact that the best headgear isn't a fucking pixie hood. With weapons, it's perfectly understandable because a weapon's a weapon. You really don't care how they look most of the time. You just want them to kill people. So add that system to the weapons, sure. But as far as gear is concerned, armor and things should be done through upgrades, not the gear you choose to wear. Upgrading weapons and armor in this game is probably the most painful part of it because it takes about as much to upgrade one piece of gear as it does to upgrade the hull of your fucking ship. And that's ridiculous, that's a lot of grinding just to upgrade one thing, or to upgrade your ship for that matter. And don't even get me started on that ancient tablet nonsense, that was just a really cheap way to get us to explore the open world. And with all these factors to consider when upgrading something, upgrading something became really, really painful to do. The premise there is good, but it's too focused on wasting our time, and it needs to settle down. For the ship on the other hand, I 100% understand the loads and loads of resources required to upgrade it. The one thing I don't understand is why we need to find ancient tablets. That part makes zero sense. Ancient knowledge helps you upgrade your ship, fuck off. No it doesn't. This is just a cheap way to force us to explore the open world. So without the ancient tablet part there, I would have no gripes with upgrading the ship and the system presented there. Now let's talk about perhaps one of the most important factors in a single player experience. The story. If I were to sum up the story in one word, it would definitely be something along the lines of mediocre. It has highs and lows and ultimately doesn't compel me nearly enough at some points. 
Some parts were pretty damn good and the ending wasn't terrible, but a lot of the in-between dragged and didn't engage me nearly at all. The story is divided into three separate arcs. You have the family story, the cult story, and the first Civ story, which is what's related to the modern day. The first Civ and family stories are both good to a degree, but there are some points where you feel as if it's just filler. The first Civ story did include a lot of what the fuck moments to be fair, as it's intertwining with the modern day, and to be honest it's quite interesting, but I'm not entirely sure what's going on there even after playing it. Then you have the cult story which for me was the lacking one of the three because it was basically just kill all cultists because the game says so, there wasn't really very much going on there, there was occasional cutscenes because cultists would show up all over the place, and the ending just didn't feel worth it on that one even though it took me hours after I completed the other two endings to even get to that one. Honestly it didn't feel like there was a very adequate payoff for the amount of work that it took to get to it, barring an interesting cutscene for sure. The modern day story is no less underwhelming than Origins was, it was a bit more interesting than sitting in a cave all game, but it's nowhere near the same quality of the modern day that we got in the Desmond Saga. And frankly, I'd love to have some more modern day like that in the new Assassin's Creed games so we can see an actual progression as opposed to fuck all every time. As far as it advances the story of the franchise, we don't know if it does or doesn't yet because the modern day is practically a raping of the mind, but it does appear as if we might wind up somewhere unless they decide to backpedal or go, that was Odyssey, this is a different story in the next game and just forget about it. The ball's rolling slightly now, keep it that way and maybe speed it up a little if anything. More modern day is needed and we need the exit animus feature back, god damn it, it's nowhere near perfect but at least it's there to begin with. As far as voice acting is concerned, Alexios and Cassandra are both voiced pretty poorly, which is understandable because they're trying to emulate each other so there's only so much that can be done. Which begs the question, was the choose your character option really necessary? The only reason Ubisoft won't do a full female protagonist like they should have here, because the game is canon to Cassandra, is because they're still afraid that a female protagonist won't sell, even though games like Horizon Zero Dawn have proven that they definitely do. Above all else, a good protagonist will sell. So please, for the love of God, for the next game, give us a character that doesn't sound like a regular NPC or Santa Claus having a permanent orgasm. Sidecast acting for once might have actually trumped the protagonists, which is the complete opposite issue to what Origins had. There's no consistency. Some characters are voiced better than others, but all in all, there's something here that isn't clicking 100%, and in my opinion, it really brings the game down. If there's one thing that I really like about this game, though, that Origins didn't have, it's that the protagonist actually does have a network of friends who show up here and there throughout the story, whereas with Bayek in Origins, you didn't really have any of those, you had Aya and Apollodorus, but no real network of friends and people established in the world that you saw for more than one quest. So it's great that in this game there is actually a network of friends who show up all over the place, such as Herodotus, Pericles, Socrates, Aspasia, Barnabas, Brasidas, and so on, you get the point. And how could I forget Phoebe? It doesn't mean that they're particularly memorable, but at least they're there. And to be fair, a lot of them really are quite memorable. An organic playthrough off the bat took me roughly 50 hours to complete, and honestly that's fair, I'll give the game that. Though from what I've been saying before, I'd be lying if I said that was 50 hours of quality content as much as a lot of filler and some story content here and there. And don't get me wrong, sometimes filler can be good for you, right? Sometimes filler can be really good for a game, but when it's all over the place, it gets really annoying. On to the topic of performance, the game runs fine. It's smooth when capped to 30 to 45 frames on PC and I play on relatively high settings. I get the old lag spike here and there, but that comes with PC gaming. Ultimately, it's a smooth, relatively glitch-free experience and for that I give the game a pass with two big thumbs up and a smiley face. Though I've had a couple of crashes, but I'm sure that's an issue on my rigs part than the games. I've played a bit of the game on PS4 as well, and I haven't experienced any performance blips with it just yet, so I don't see the need to address any standout issues as far as performance is concerned, as I haven't noticed any. If there's one thing to take away from this review, it's that this game isn't really sure what it wants to be. It wants to be an RPG, but it's clutching to Assassin's Creed purely to sell, and as a result, it's holding itself back. This game could have been so much better, as an ancient Greece RPG with mythology and all that on its own. It could have been incredible, but because it had to adhere to Assassin's Creed's base principles, albeit very loosely, the game lost its magic and with it its quality. As for the lesson here, Ubisoft should not rely on their money cow to make RPGs like this forever. The potential is there and the game's good and it will sell. Odyssey could have been so much more if Ubisoft plucked up the courage to make it its own IP. Furthermore, the game relies too heavily on what Assassin's Creed used to be and what other RPGs like The Witcher have done to forge itself and doesn't really innovate within itself to push any boundaries. And on that bombshell, it's high time Ubisoft took a leap of faith.
If I were to give this game a number rating out of 10, it will probably sit at around 7. The game is good, I won't lie, it's a fun experience for a bit, it has its challenges and it has plenty to do, complete with a decent soundtrack, a nice open world, and an interesting historical setting, just like Origins in many respects, but with way more RPG elements. However, the game had the potential to trail off into its own thing, and Assassin's Creed held it back from that, and so it's a shame really that this game only got a 7 out of 10 from me, but I felt like the game could have been more on its own than as a part of this cash cow of a franchise. Not to mention that even though it's gone into the RPG genre fully now, it's still playing catch up with games like Mass Effect and The Witcher 3, which have been out for years. So if they continue down this path with the next Assassin's Creed game, hopefully it's more caught up with what's modern in the RPG genre. But anyways, there you have it. That's my review, everybody. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Do you agree with what I've said? Do you disagree? Let me know. As long as you don't threaten to petrol bomb my house, I'll be perfectly fine with it. Actually, that would be pretty funny. But anyways, I apologise for the length of this video. I did have a lot to say about this game. But thank you all for sitting through it if you've gotten to this point. And hopefully I'll see you all very soon with another video at some point. I'm